Hey, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's Peyton Anderson back with Next Level Athletes. Um, my guest on the podcast today is the one and only Donovan Eaglin, a former Michigan State running back. The Texas native himself, himself rushed for over 800 yards with six rushing touchdowns this past season at Alabama A&M. Uh, first off, thank you, Donovan, for taking the time tonight to come on the podcast. Sure, I appreciate you. Of course. Sure. Of course. And uh, starting with your recruitment out of high school, your only FBS offer was from Mark D'Antonio's 2020 and last recruiting class from Michigan State. How would you not only summarize your official visit back in January 2020 there, but also what specifically about Michigan State and his program led you to ultimately commit there to begin your collegiate career? I would say to go back to my official visit, it was amazing. I never, I didn't know about, I didn't know about official visits really coming out of high school. So when I got it, you know, everything was paid for. The visit was great. The campus was great. The facilities, meeting the teammates was great. So everything was good. What really led to my decision was they was the first FBS school to give me a chance. So mm -hmm. I felt like since they gave me a chance, I had to show loyalty because, of course, actually right before signing day, uh, Oklahoma State was trying to get me to go there. So mm -hmm. I just felt like just staying loyal to them and Coach Samuel, he really recruited me heavy. So it was really just staying loyal to them. And I really liked the program when I went up there. And I wanted to be away from home. Mm -hmm. And um, what did you learn the most about yourself coming out of high school after experiencing that recruitment process as a whole? I learned that with the recruiting process, it's all about patience. Like, it doesn't matter how it will. It doesn't matter who you are or who getting these offers or other people getting offers. It's really just off you. It's your story. It was really just staying patience. And I learned mm -hmm. that I can be away from home by going somewhere far. But pretty much just staying patient with the recruiting process. That's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. And uh, before continuing on with your time at Michigan State, uh, let's take a look back at your high school career. During that time, you saw yourself accumulate a total of 2,221 all-purpose yards, uh, over 1,900 rushing, over 200 receiving, and 31 kick return with 32 touchdowns, but also a whole lot more, including three state playoff wins, as well as the berth in the Texas Class 5A Division II quarterfinals. But with that said, how would you describe your high school career as a whole, but also your all-time favorite memory or memories? My high school career was great. I feel like as my sophomore, my junior year, it really was just my learning stages. I learned from uh, the running backs ahead of me, Ladarius Owens, Garrison Johnson, and Denaric Prince, who was actually going to the Chiefs now. He actually just got drafted to the Chiefs. So mm -hmm. really those years, I was just learning from them, seeing what they did, seeing what they did good. And my senior year, it was just all on me, and I really enjoyed it. I really did good. I helped my team out. A lot trying to make it, make it, making the playoff run. So that was real fun. I would say my favorite memory from high school football would be my third round, my third round playoff game. I had I think two hundred and eighty six yards with five touchdowns. I think that would actually be my favorite moment. I had a real good game that game. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, additionally, uh, this can be any grade, not just high school. But mm -hmm. was there anyone growing up, whether that be teacher, coach, or someone else, that stood out to you most and went above and beyond to help prepare you and your future? I would say what really helped me with my future was my father, of course, and also Coach Crum. Coach Crum was my running back coach at Manville High School. So he really helped me out with knowing what I need to do to get to the next level, to get to college, trying to push me and push me. So it really helped me out all through my years to help me elevate my game. Mm -hmm. And um, going back to Michigan State, you began your career by retroing the 2020 season. What led you to make that decision? But also, what did you learn and take away most during that year where COVID shook everything up for everyone? What I learned is you just have to – everybody has to adapt to the change. I mean, it was a lot of changes with football. Like, we first started off having to wear – masks all the time in the weight room and mm -hmm. just things like that. So I would just say just to having to adapt to play the game that I love. It was just, it was just different. I had to wake up early for COVID tests and just have to really just sacrifice things to be able to play. So mm -hmm. that was really, that was really what I had to do to during COVID. It was just about that. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, moving forward into your 2021 uh, redshirt freshman season with Michigan State, you played in all 13 games, primarily in the special teams, but also earning your first career uh, carry against Youngstown State. That season will make your Spartan debut at Northwestern special teams. Uh, first of all, what was it like going from a redshirt year in 2020 to appearing in all 13 games? But also talk us through your mindset and your thoughts going into your debut against Northwestern, but also your first ever collegiate run. Uh, I was, what's really different was just the pace of the game, like coming from not getting no college runs or not being no college games to now and just, just having to get used to the guys are bigger, everybody's bigger, stronger, and faster. So I would say that was the biggest thing for me, just the speed of the game. And my game premiere, my first run against Youngtown State, I'll never forget. I think I got six or seven yards on the run, but it made me feel really good just to get the nerves out, really. I was really mm -hmm. nervous getting into the, getting that first run. But after that, it was really good just going out there and showing what I can do during that game. But that's about it. Mm -hmm. And um, shifting focus towards your time in the transfer portal, you ultimately uh, committed to Alabama A&M by announcing news on Twitter May 11th of 2022. Uh, you saw yourself receive numerous offers before committing, but also saw yourself ultimately join an offense last season that just moved on from Akeel Glass. Uh, first of all, what did you prioritize with your mindset and focus going into the transfer portal, but also what stood out to you most about Alabama A&M and its program to be able to commit there over other schools? What I prioritized over was just a family, really a family atmosphere for me. It's a family atmosphere. Of course, I wanted to go somewhere I can showcase my talents. And I really want to be close to home because I'm I'm from Houston originally. So being in Michigan, mm -hmm. sparking my people to come to the games and things. So I really want to be close to the home so my people can see me play or my family and my friends. Mm -hmm. I also made, what really made my decision was when I came down to the official visit with the coaches, um, me and my dad really bonded with the coaches. The coaches kept it real with me, told me the situation with the running backs, like what was really going on. So I would say that and just it being a different, just being it being different. Also, it was closer to home being in Alabama and my mm -hmm. and it being the HBCU, which is new. I never really knew about HBCUs coming out of high school. Like, that was really new to me. Only reason I know about HBCU is because my mom went to one. Mm -hmm. So really that, just knowing that they gave me a chance and it was closer to home and I just felt real comfortable here. Mm -hmm. And uh, while on the topic, this past season, you saw yourself carry the ball over 150 times for more than 800 yards with six rushing touchdowns. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, how do you best summarize how last season played out? I would say last season played out we played out good. We didn't win, win a we didn't win a lot of games, but I feel like all the puzzles just was fit together for me because the first four games, of course, I didn't start it. I was a I was another running back, a great running back ahead of me. So coming into my fourth game, it was just no my fifth game. I think my fifth game. Yeah, coming to my fifth game, I got my first start, and it was just amazing. I just really just started balling out. I went. Crazy the first game. I think I had like three touchdowns for 180 or, or something. But it was just really just uh, taking my opportunity and just going far with it. And I just enjoyed it. I mean, like I said, last season it was okay, but this season going to be way better for mm -hmm. the whole team. The whole team. Mm -hmm. And additionally, uh, what did you learn most about yourself as an athlete and individual the past <laughs> season? What I, lear what I learned about myself is – that I am, I am real patient. Like I'm not, I'm not no greedy person. I'm always going to be patient and wait and wait my time. I've always been patient since a kid. My dad has taught me that. So I would say being patient and just being a, I'm a real hard worker. Like I really worked hard to be where I am. So I would say those in my mindset, I'll say my mindset is real different. I'm real. I feel like I'm more mature than I used to be. So mm -hmm. I feel like I learned that about myself too, going into, going into last season. And uh, in regards to this current off season, uh, what have you been specifically looking to improve on and implement in your overall game and skill set uh, on the field heading into next season and beyond? I'm looking to making more people miss, stop taking a lot of hits, 
of course, working on my blocking, fitting, fitting my hands better on linebackers or safeties or whoever I have to block. And also just adding that arsenal of being able to go out to the slot, like uh, Jameer Gibbs and Alvin Kamara being like one of those guys so I can be all around back. So all those things I've been working on for the spring and I'm continuing working on during the summer and the fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, when talking about recruitment, uh, the NIL world and the deals and everything else in between that, um, that might take place for any given athlete. It could be a lot to handle, I'm sure. So in your own words, and you're taking your own recruitment process into consideration, what advice would you have to share with anyone uh, wanting to pursue a collegiate career and anything they should maybe look out for or um, pay attention to in particular when deciding where they want to play at? I would say to anybody, pick where you want to go. Choose where your heart is at. Like, block out the noise, because at the end of the day, it's you having to be there for four or three years. With the, NI, with the NIL, I would say you shouldn't choose your college based off of how much money you're going to make or the deals they're making. I say it's really all for you, really all for you and your family, mostly you, though, because like I said, you're going to be there for three to four years. So I would say really just find the best atmosphere, best environment for you to grow as a person, for you. That's what I mm -hmm. say. And then when transitioning over to life off the field, uh, what does a typical day look like for you during the season and the off season? During the season, it would be practice in the morning at six o'clock, six o'clock to eight o'clock. I usually get out, go to breakfast by eight to nine. And I usually take me a nap because I usually have class at like 11. I might take me an hour nap. After I mm -hmm. take a shower, I get take a nap, go to class, from 11 to about 12, then I'll go to lunch with my teammates. Then I'll have like another class at two to three. And after two to three, I'll probably go to the uh, training room, give me some treatment, uh, whatever I need that day. And then after that, we'll have meetings. We'll have meetings later on that day. And then it'll just be a repeat. But during the, during the off season though, we, we just work out in the morning. It was kind of more light, we work out in the morning. Mm -hmm. After that, you got breakfast, and then you go, you got your classes, of course, and then I usually go back later and just get some extra work in if it's just catching some passes or just doing some shoulders mobility or just, just trying to get some extra in. Mm -hmm. And then usually usually I just be playing on my PS5 after that. I just be chilling if I don't have yeah. no home. Yeah, I just be yeah. playing on my PS5. So other than that, it's real chill, all season real more chill than during the season, of course. Uh, what's your go-to for PS5? 2K. <laughs> 2K or Madden. 2K, nice. I only play 2K, Madden, or Call of Duty. Those are the only three games I play. Only nice. three games. And um, let's uh, just say, let's talk about your major. Uh, what is it about, uh, but also why you chose it and what possibilities it might have in store for you in your future? Uh, yes, I just got into this major this semester. I just changed my major to family and consumer science with a concentration in human development. Mm -hmm. And basically that is just, that could be a psychologist or someone that's helping a family, a counselor, or really anything. And really with me, I just, I like the major cause I feel like I can help families and I can help kids from younger generations about what I went through or, or things they're going through. I feel like I can help them. But that's really what mm -hmm. my major is about. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking back in the Michigan State and this program as a whole. Uh, what would you say the program prides themselves uh, most on when it came to their student athletes during your time there? School. School, school, school. I would say Michigan State really helped me a lot with school and just staying on my school and just – prioritize your time. I'll say that it really helps you with your time. Like usually, usually like you're really using your time management skills at, at Michigan State. That really helped me. I haven't used my time management skills. And also it helped me like being places early, like just coming to places five minutes early instead of being there on time. Like, cause usually on time was five minutes early there. So I would say school and just time management that really helped me. Mm -hmm. And um, what did you feel and represent uh, whenever you put on a Spartan uniform during your time there? 
it's a it's a brotherhood. It's a family. Like Spartan, like Spartan dog, like all all that's real. So I would say just putting on that jersey, it felt good. Just putting on putting on the green and white jersey, it felt amazing. It felt amazing playing in the Spartan Stadium. They call it the woodshed. It's a lot. A lot of people come to the games. It's a lot of alumni. It's a bunch of people that fans. It's just a lot of support there. So I say it felt it felt really good being able to play on that big stage, be on TV, and just and just be be there. Just it, it mm -hmm. was just amazing for my family to see me there and my friends. Mm -hmm. And um, additionally, in your twenty twenty one season, there the team went eleven and two overall and won the Chick Chick fil A uh, Peach Bowl against Pittsburgh. Uh, what was that experience for yourself? But also, what do you think being able to watch uh, play and even win a bowl game? can do for someone's career such as your own, but also what it can do for athletes when it comes to playing in front of packed crowds as well as high pressure uh, moments. I'll say that year, that year was the best year for us, for me. I learned a lot from um, Kenneth, Kenneth Walker. That's what the Seahawks mm -hmm. now he really helped me develop to become a better running back as well. Just seeing how he worked, seeing what he did and just trying to match him or, try to outwork him or he outwork. We just, you know, just trying to work out with each other. So that year was a magical year with the bowl game. It was amazing. It was amazing feeling to go to Atlanta and play at the Peach Bowl, one of the New Year's Six Bowls. So it was amazing winning a ring. I never, I didn't win a ring in high school. So mm -hmm. it was, it was good winning a ring and the rings are real big. So I didn't know they were that big, but yeah, it was, it was really amazing. And playing a bunch in front of a bunch of crowd, it was, it was different. Very different from high school, even though Texas high school is huge. So I played against a couple big crowds, but in college it's way different, especially in a hostile environment. I remember going to Ohio State. It was crazy. Like, you can't hear nothing. Mm -hmm. like, it's just straight yelling. And so I would say you just have to block out the noise for me. Just block out the noise and just play football. And um, what was your favorite thing you did behind the scenes uh, that for that bowl game experience? My favorite thing was when we toured the College Hall of Fame. I never been to the College Hall of Fame, so that was my favorite thing, touring the College Hall of Fame with my teammates, seeing different things, trying to get inspired to one day be in the College Hall of Fame. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. And um, when shifting over to Alabama A&M and this program as a whole, uh, what do you feel the program prides itself uh, most on when it comes to their student-athletes? I would say they... They prioritize on us on school as well, making sure we get our schoolwork, making sure we graduate in three to four years. But we're also, also just helping us become better people, become a better man or a better woman, no matter what sport you play, and just helping us and telling us that it's always life after football, helping us with internships for the summer, helping us get jobs, just things like that. So I would say this school really has helped me a lot this year and not even a year yet. And, it, and it helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, when you put on that Bulldog uniform each time, uh, who do you play for? What do you represent as the athlete and individual, but also what that meaning uniform means to you specifically? I would say the, the uniform to me means a lot. Like wearing that seven on the front and the back of my jersey, it just means a lot because a lot of people – you know they come to they come to see you play kids family friends so it just means a lot wearing that seven jersey and balling out and helping my team and I would say um what was the other questions you said uh who do you play for when you get on the field I play for my family I play for my family and myself because my family just loves seeing me play yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, I play for myself because I'm trying to get to the next level. And mm -hmm. I just want to really want to make my family proud. So I really play for them and myself, just working hard, trying to make the plays that I get and just win games. And I play for my teammates, play mm -hmm. for my teammates, play for them all the time. Lay it on the line for my brothers all the time. I play yes. for them as well. And um, seeing that the team went four and seven overall with conference record of 500 last season, uh, what are you most looking forward to going forward in the next season and beyond? I'm looking forward to us being the underdogs in every game. <laughs> every game, us being the underdogs and us proving people wrong. Because people, you know, they really, 
worried about last season and saying we're not that good or but we was really just rebuilding. And I feel like this year, this year is gonna be real amazing. We're gonna have a real good season. So I'm just ready for the doubters. I'm ready for the doubters and just prove everybody wrong this year. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at the NIL world and opportunities. Uh have you been involved with or a part of anything so far? Um, yes, sir. I've had been a part of uh I think I've been a part of Superior Sports Network. It's a network that is up and upcoming for the HBCUs. So I've been working with them. I've done some photo shoots for them and some other things. So I'm supposed to be doing some more stuff in the summer with them. Mm-hmm. So it should be. And of course, I should be trying to get some other NIO deals coming along as well. And yeah, and uh, talking about that, uh, yeah. is there any brand or company you're really interested in and want to be a partner with in the future? I me, mean, I, I would say body armor. I drink body armor a lot. So mm-hmm. I'll say body armor and I, yeah, I'll say body armors and maybe Bojangles. It's a place down here where you get food. It's a real good place, not too far from our school. So I really say body armor or Bojangles. I like the partnership with them. Mm-hmm. And additionally, uh, what is your personal outlook and thoughts on NIL in its entirety, not only now, but for the future of athletes and generations to come? I feel like it really has helped us athletes because we are the ones, of course, playing and using the, everybody sharing our name, using our name. So I feel like it's it's good for the athletes. But I could also say it could be negative too. It could be a negative for maybe the younger generation that's coming up because it might. I think it's going to be a lot of a lot of changes. They're going to change a lot with the NIL for mm-hmm. it being its first year. So I feel like it's going to be a lot of changes, and they're going to try to cut down on some things that some people are doing, but I would say it really has been helpful for us athletes, though, you know, getting money because we're playing and it's our name, so I feel like it's helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking back into life off the field. How would you describe yourself not only as an athlete on the field, uh, but also as an individual off the field, as well as what you pride yourself most on when it comes to life in general? I pride myself on being confident and humble. I'm a real confident confident and humble guy, and I'm real laid back. I don't really talk too much. I don't really talk a lot unless I really know you, unless I'm, mm-hmm. like, you my, my teammates or something. But that's about it. And on my outlook of life, like, I, other than football, I like playing video games, fishing, being hanging out with my family, hanging out with my girlfriend, and just things like that. So that's really my outlook of life. I really like being with my family. Mm-hmm. And um, additionally, uh, where on campus would you say is the place to be at Alabama A and M? Bulldog Stadium. Okay. And why is that? That's where we take dubs at. That's where we mm-hmm. win games. <laughs> of course. And um, what is your favorite things to do besides football when it comes to the city of Huntsville, Alabama? But also, what you say is the place to go, uh, food wise and entertainment wise in the city. I would say what I like to do in Huntsville is try new food. I like to hang out with my teammates, of course, hang out with my girlfriend and her family. And I would say the places to go, I said a real good food place to go. My recommend is Bravo's. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's pasta and things like that. But, But just to go out and have fun, I would say... I would say main event or this trampoline place called Flow. It's really fun. Really mm-hmm. fun place to just have fun with you or your family or you and your friends. Uh-huh. And um, when talking about accomplishments, uh, what is something off the field you're most proud of yourself for, whether that be academically, socially, or something else? I am most proud of myself for getting A's and B's this semester. That's one of my most proud. I'm proud to have a 3.4 GPA as well. So mm-hmm. being a student athlete, that's what I'm most proud about. Mm-hmm. And um, additionally, when it comes to being an athlete and playing college football, uh, what would you say is something valuable you learned over time up to where you are now that you feel you wouldn't have been able to experience or learn firsthand if you're not an athlete or playing football at any level? I would say... 
I'll say I'll learn how to how to be patient, like I said earlier, but I also say I I learned how to just be more of a leader than I was back then. I feel like it helped me, they helped me on the field and off the field, being a leader on the football field, being a leader in the classroom or being a leader to my family. I would say that Arsenal has really leveled up just having leadership and just trying to teach people things that they don't know. And also another thing I really learned is being a good listener. I, I really wasn't a good listener back then, but I started being a good listener, just listening to people give me advice or just giving me, really just giving me help. Cause people, of course, my coaches and older people know more than me. So really just taking advice and actually comprehending the things they're telling me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when taking a look in the next level, such as the NFL, if you're asked by a scout or coach what you're capable of, uh, we can add to a roster, but also why they should look into you specifically. How would you respond? What do they get? What would they be getting out of you, both as an athlete on the field and individual off the field? On the field, they'll be getting a hard worker, hard worker who is just going all the time, going 24 7, just working, working, working. They also find me as a good teammate. Anything for the team, anything to help win the team, I'll do. It's just in me. And off the field, you just find a real confident and nice, kind person. I'm really kind. I like doing um community service for kids and helping mm -hmm. and helping people. So I would say off the field, I'll be a really helpful person. On the field, I'll be a hard worker just looking to win and help my teammates team at any cost and um when thinking of the people that mean the most to you in your life growing up who would these people be for you specifically but also if they were to be listening uh what would you have to share with them the most important people in my life would be my mother my father and my grandparents and i just want to say to them like i love them for everything they have done and they continue to push me every day trying to make me a better football player and a man. And I really just appreciate every everything they have done for me and taught me, and they mean the world to me. Mm -hmm. And um, additionally, what advice that you've gotten in your life so far has stuck to you the most over time? What advice has stuck with me? I would say never. I would say... The advice that stuck with me is never take things for granted. Like never take this game for granted. Like I can get injured or the game can get taken away from you. So I would just say never taking things for granted, football, life, or anything. Just always stay prayed up and just thank God for another day. But that's what I would say. Just never take things for granted. Mm -hmm. And um, off the field again, uh, what is something you want to be able to advocate and use your platform to advocate for, uh, whether that be what you were already talking about, community service and kind of helping the kids in the community? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that. I would say just me being a football player, just helping the community, knowing that I'm more than a football player, Um, talking to kids, talking to families, parents, just letting them know my story or any questions they have really just I'm tr just trying to give back to people just like how older people used to come talk to me when I was a kid just trying to do the mm -hmm. same thing that people have done for me mm -hmm. and uh, when your collegiate career eventually comes to an end how do you want to be remembered most for it during your time not only with Michigan State but also with Alabama A&M both I just want to be remembered as a a good, a great football player and just a real respectful young man. I never got into any trouble or talked to anyone, any kind of, just being very respectful to everybody and just a very good football player that's made it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And um, last question, when things are all said and done, uh, what do you think you'll miss most about being in college and having the opportunity to play college football, both at the FCS and FBS divisions? What I miss the most is just the, the, the Saturday, just the Saturday, just the game days. I'm I'm gonna miss game days the most. It's just the most exciting to me with the bands and the, the fans 
and with the tail, just like watch it. Like as you're going into the game, you see the tailgates, you see a whole bunch of stuff. I just, I'm, I think I'm just really going to miss all that. And of course, I'm going to miss my teammates playing with my teammates. I'm going to miss them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, Donovan Eaglin, uh, Alabama A&M running back. Donovan, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time tonight and uh, looking forward and wishing you the best with your future, man. You too, man. I appreciate you having me.